Okay, so who are you and what are you doing now? Hi, my name is Beth Novick and I'm a professor of law at New York Law School. Uh, and I formerly served in the White House as the Deputy Chief Technology Officer and Director of the White House Open Government Initiative. So we're here outside of the National Archives where for the past couple of days we've been at a conference connecting people who work in open government with the research and development community. What's been happening there? What's been happening is a vibrant and fantastic conversation bringing together people who work in government with people from various disciplines. I refer to it as the Noah's Ark of Conferences. To statisticians, to computer scientists, to political scientists, it's, you get the idea. Really getting together to talk about if we want to study the impact and effects of government innovation and we want to accelerate the impact of government innovation by studying what works and what doesn't work, then we need to have a conversation about what the questions are that researchers should be studying and we need to get government people connected with researchers in order to identify what the interesting case studies are, identify what the questions are, and really try to connect the two communities so, as I said, we can accelerate the pace of in a good innovation that works. What are some of the big questions that came out of the conference that need to be at answered at this point? Oh, there were so many big problems and questions and opportunities that were really raised. I think um, among some of the things that come quickly to mind after a long day was, first, if we want to actually put out large, make large-scale data sets available to people so that people can mash them up and identify, for example, which schools are functioning better, which health, which hospitals work better, then we need to be able to figure out how to anonymize private and personal information about individuals. That's an interesting technical problem. It's also an interesting legal problem of how we bring anonymity to large-scale data so that we can make it more useful and use it. I think one of the other really interesting questions and problems that came up was how we get multiple disciplines working together, like law and technology, like statistics and computer science, like public policy, working in tandem on some of these big questions so that we can take a systems approach to solving them. Because the, really the major thing that was raised in the conference is that open government serves many different purposes. It's for the purpose of creating accountability. It's for the purpose of creating greater civic virtue and democratic participation. Open government also helps to make government work better and perform better. And above all, I think it helps to get people involved with government in solving problems and working together in new ways. So if we're going to really try to understand how to achieve those aims, if we think that open government will produce more accountability, we have to really study, is it doing that and how are we doing that? If we want it to enable government to perform better and be more effective, we have to ask ourselves the questions and really try to come up with the answers about better performance management and how we do that. What were some of the answers that we saw come out of this in terms of what the early results of some of that research is showing? Oh, so I think it's good emphasis on early. A lot of this is very, very early work. Um, and But some of the work that's being done, some of the earliest work that's being, being done is in the technical space around the use of and manipulation of new open government data sets, in other words, data that the government is putting out that's helping people to identify, for example, and develop new strategies for how to um, do exactly these things and empower citizens like uh, identify which hospital is actually uh, the safer and the healthier place to go, which mm -hmm. which uh, uh, government services are working better. Um, I think some of the interesting work that's also being done now is looking at how um, to actually create new systems, both legal and technical systems, that will allow people to participate in government more effectively. And I think there's been some interesting research done that can be applied in this space to helping us create a more participatory government. So that's one of the challenges for the 21st century uh, in terms of bringing the kinds of deliberative democracy systems that exist offline online. Um, you were involved in a number of different ways uh, in, while you are at the White House. Um, what are some of the ways that uh, the academic community is suggesting that uh, next steps uh, for government should be directed? So I think we had a very, some, a very interesting dis last panel discussion that sort of focused a lot on this question of how we create more participatory institutions. We had folks who represented the computational social science community, for example, who are the type of people who take large-scale government data sets to understand demographic trends about where people and how they are participating and how they could participate, how we can build communities of interest around different topics. We had someone from web sciences and computer science who really looks at, again, what are the technical strategies strategies by which we can take data and make it available to people and also make it intelligible to people. We had folks who come from the world that we might call smart disclosure, who understand that we have data in lots of it in raw form, but what are the techniques, the sociological and anthropological techniques, the human-computer interaction techniques that we can use to translate raw data 
into information that's useful to people that will then inform how they participate. It's one thing to have raw data, another thing to have information that actually people without technical skills can understand and can make use of in new ways. Um, and so we heard from wonderful different perspectives from different disciplines exactly trying to raise a lot of the questions and then hopefully over the coming months to try to provide some of the answers. And if people want to know more about uh, where to participate right now, what are the, some of the places they can go online? So there are a couple of places people should go. First, if they want to hear about the conference and the follow-on to the conference, they can go to niterd.gov slash open. That's N-I-T-R-D dot gov slash open. A second site that I want to let people know about is the Geeks for Wonks site. That's mm -hmm. geeksforwonks.org, which is a place for people in government who have interesting case studies, interesting challenges, interesting innovations, and are looking for people to study them or to help them with them to actually put out a call for assistance. And for academics, for students, for others, for activists who are interested in actually looking for problems to work on, to solve, and to study, project-based learning classes in law, in technology, doctoral students writing dissertations in sociology or in public policy, who are looking for agencies that they can work with and problems that they could get involved in. It's really a matching site to help connect people to one another and a place to start to build the community of interest around research on public sector innovation. Great. And for people who want to find you, I think you're at, at Beth Novek, N-O-V-E-C-K, on Twitter as well. That's right. Thank okay, you. Okay. Thank you.